Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. Either way, I'm super excited to be hanging out with you for today's video. This video is actually inspired by a video that I made last summer where I compared a bunch of different tinted sunscreens from Elta MD. I showed you guys differences as far as the formulation, we talked through ingredients, and I just let you know which ones I thought may be better for certain skin types than others. So that is exactly what I want to do here today but with their untinted sunscreens. So we're gonna jump into this because we have a lot of sunscreens to get through today. I'll show you guys how these actually apply on the skin so that you can get a feel for the finish and hopefully by the end of this video, you will be able to figure out which Ulta MD sunscreen that is untinted is going to be best for you and your skin type. Before we jump into it, if you are new here, my name's Abby and I'm obsessed with all things beauty. If you're into skincare content like this and hair care content and a little bit of makeup here and there, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. Both of those things really help to support me, so thank you so much for doing that. Also, you should definitely come hang out with me on Instagram and TikTok. My username is Abby Young, which is right here on all platforms. And I just recently launched my Lightroom presets for editing Instagram photos that I will link below. If you need some new filters that are not too over the top and too harsh, but just really give your photos that little pop that you may be looking for and make the editing process super, super quick and easy, then these are gonna be the perfect filters for you and they are listed in my description box below. All right, let's jump right into it. I can't jump into it because I almost forgot to say the most important thing, which is that I actually landed you guys a discount on Elta MD sunscreens through skinstore.com. So this video is in collaboration, if you will, with them, but not in paid partnership because it's not sponsored, not getting paid. They just gifted me these sunscreens in PR and also landed you guys a discount code on Elta MD sunscreens through their website. So I'll have that listed below, link to the website as well as that discount if you are interested in purchasing at the end of this. Okay, now we can really jump into it. All right, let's just start off with what I feel is the number one fan favorite from Elta MD, which is their UV clear sunscreen. So this one has 1.7 ounces of product, retails for $36 and is a broad spectrum SPF 46. So it says it calms and protects acne prone skin. It has high purity niacinamide, transparent zinc oxide and UVA and UVB protection. It's a facial sunscreen that says it's for skin types prone to acne, rosacea, and hyperpigmentation. This is a combination sunscreen, so it has both mineral and chemical filters. Almost all of their sunscreens actually are combination sunscreens, but we'll talk through actives for each of them. So this has zinc oxide, which is the mineral filter, and octanoxate, which is the chemical filter. And aside from the addition of niacinamide, which is a great ingredient for acne prone skin and those with red skin because it can calm and soothe and help to regulate regulate sebum production. It also has some other great ingredients in it like vitamin E, which will condition the skin, sodium hyaluronate and lactic acid. And when lactic acid is in a formulation like this, when it's not at that lower pH to actually exfoliate the skin, it actually serves as a really nice hydrator for the skin. And I'm gonna show you guys swatches of this actually, kind of like it's makeup on the back of my hand. And then I'll also show you how it applies to the face with both one and two applications. The swatch on the back of the hand is not for you guys to see the cast or how it actually looks on the face. That's what the face swatches are for, but I think it gives you a really good feel for the formulation so that you can see that up close before it's fully blended in. And then of course you'll see it on my face after. So I find myself reaching for this one constantly because of the formulation. It feels so, so nice on the skin. I would say it's kind of like a whipped creamy feel to it. A lot of sunscreens or products that are whipped tend to have a moussey formulation. So it's not like that at all. It still is very creamy but it feels so good. It's kind of that fluffier formula. If anyone knows what I'm talking about, it feels incredibly softening on the skin, very, very hydrating. Oh my gosh, this formula is everything. But I will say, if you're someone that prefers a sunscreen that is incredibly liquidy, almost that kind of watery consistency that is pretty much traceless on the skin, then honestly, this won't really be a brand for you because none of their sunscreens have that kind of formulation. So if you are after a sunscreen like that, I'll list a video below. I think it's my most recent, yeah, it is sunscreen favorites video. I have a couple in that video that do have that formula that will be more up your alley. But if not, I still do think that this is one that feels lightweight on the skin. It just is a little creamier, but boy, is it good. I also just love this because of the way that it applies to the skin. So both with one and two applications, I don't have any issues with the way that it rubs in. So rubs in really nicely and evenly. It's not patchy or streaky. It doesn't pill at all really, really good in all of those categories. And this does not have a white cast on me at all, which is amazing. I would say that the finish is 
a radiant dewy finish. It's not super wet looking on the skin, but it definitely does not mattify the skin either. So I would honestly say that this would work for most skin types, unless you're someone that is incredibly oily to again, where you need that light, light, lightweight, traceless feel, or someone that is incredibly dry and flaky to where you need something that actually is thicker than this. But otherwise I really do think it would work for most people. It's so good. Now let's talk about UV Daily. So this one has the same amount of product, but costs $29.50, so a little bit less. This is a broad spectrum SPF 40. It says it's sheer and lightweight. It has hyaluronic acid, transparent zinc oxide, UVA, UVB, and it's a moisturizing facial sunscreen for normal combination and post-procedure skin. Active ingredients in this one are the exact same, zinc oxide and octanoxate, and it also has sodium hyaluronate and vitamin E, but it does not have that niacinamide. So if that's an ingredient that causes your skin to sting a little bit or burn, which can happen with some people in niacinamide, then this actually may be one that you want to consider because no niacinamide here. The one thing I wanna make sure I'm bringing up here is that if you're acne prone, this may not agree Agree with your skin because the third ingredient is isopropyl myristate, which is an ingredient that can be comedogenic in higher concentrations. I always have to say this whenever I bring this up, just in case anyone is new here, but one ingredient on a label that could be pore clogging is not the end of the world because the entire ingredient label is what matters when it comes to the potential for a product to clog your pores and eventually cause a breakout or not. So there's nothing else in this product that has that pore clogging potential really, so hopefully it won't be a problem. But if you're incredibly acne prone and you know that you have issue with that ingredient, if it's high up on the label like this, then just be mindful of that. Or maybe if you have it and you feel that you're breaking out because of it, that could be why. The formulation is definitely very similar to UV Clear, but they're not identical. I do think it's a little bit thicker and does feel a little bit more moisturizing as well, but it still is not greasy or heavy feeling on the skin. I think it's just kind of a nice medium thickness for a consistency, but in a nice way where if you have dehydrated skin or dry skin, it would feel really, really nice and replenishing on the skin. The one thing about this, I do still think it rubs into the skin really well and applies with the second layer on top of it, great. It kind of does have a tiny, tiny, tiny subtle hint of a white cast. I don't know, it's not something that's super apparent when looking at me because I'm naturally really fair. Also, if you're wondering the difference in my face and body, it's because I don't put self tanner on my face, but I have it on my body. So that's why there is such a contrast. It is what it is. But because my face is so fair, I don't feel that it's super apparent. But if you had darker skin, I could imagine that it would be a more apparent white cast on you. I'm curious if any of you do have medium to deep to dark skin tones, if you have tried this and feel that it leaves a white cast, because I am seeing a little twinge of that. So just be mindful of that. But for me personally, it's not something that is bad. I have tried so many sunscreens that have a far more intense white cast than that. Similar finish on the skin again to UV clear, but it's something that looks a little bit dewier. So if you have dry skin, I think you will love this. It's such a nice finish for that skin type. Or if you have dehydrated skin that gets flaky really easily, then I think you would really enjoy this as well. It does have a nice formulation. The one issue that I have with it sometimes is that it just doesn't wear the best under all makeup. Sometimes I find that it kind of breaks up my foundation a little bit. So just be mindful of that. If you're trying to find one that wears really well underneath makeup, I would not go for that one. I think UV Clear does a much better job. Now let's move on to UV Shield. So this one has three ounces of product in it and retails for $26. It's a broad spectrum SPF 45. It's oil-free, lightweight, has transparent zinc oxide, UVA and UVB protection. And this one actually says it's a face and body sunscreen and is for oily to normal skin. Same actives here, zinc oxide and octanoxate, and there are actually no ingredient highlights that I need to call out in this one. So no hyaluronic acid, really nothing at all, which honestly I don't have a problem with when it comes to sunscreen. Obviously that's a nice bonus, but I'm using serums and moisturizers that have those ingredients anyway. The main reason I'm using sunscreen is for the sun protection. So that's what I'm most concerned with, but this also does have isopropyl myristate and it has its second on the label. So again, just be aware of that if you're super acne prone. And shocker, I love this formulation too. I mean, Alta MD just nails a sunscreen formulation. They definitely know how to do it right. So it doesn't surprise me that I enjoy all of these formulas. When I compare this to UV Clear, 
I don't want to say it's less oily because I don't feel that UV clear feels oily on the skin but when I actually swatch these right next to each other I treat sunscreen like it's makeup when I'm testing it out but when I swatch them next to each other UV shield does just feel a little bit less oily a little bit drier but definitely is not a drying formulation by any means still feels very nice and moisturizing and hydrating but just a little bit less so than UV Clear and definitely less than UV Daily. Same great application with this one, no issues with layering, multiple applications of it. And I would say that this actually has kind of a similar issue to UV Daily where there's a really subtle, subtle white cast that's not super apparent, but again, if you had darker skin, may not be something that works out for you. I also think that the finish of this one is definitely just a little bit more flat than both UV Clear and UV Daily, which makes sense because that's what we were just saying the formulation is like, but if you want something that doesn't look so glowy on the skin, I do think UV Shield is a little bit more toned down, but still it doesn't make the skin look dry by any means. Next we have UV Replenish. I don't know if this was their newest one or if UV Restore was. I feel like they came out close together. I could be making that up. Either way, we're going to cover both, starting off with Replenish. This one has two ounces of product in it and retails for $33.50. So this is the first sunscreen so far out of all of these that is water resistant, which is definitely something to look out for if you're going to be outside in the sun for long periods of time, because if you're going to be sweating in the sun, you want a sunscreen to be resistant to that water. So that's great. It's only 40 minutes though, and I've definitely seen sunscreens that have 80 minutes of water resistance, so not the best that I've seen. But this is also the first sunscreen out of all of these that's not a combination sunscreen. So it only has mineral filters. It has both zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. And that can be helpful if you're someone with really, really sensitive skin that's easily irritated by ingredients like chemical filters. None of these sunscreens irritate my skin whatsoever. Of course, I would let you guys know that. But there are certain chemical filters and sunscreens that can be really irritating for some. I will say that avobenzone tends to be more notorious for that than something like octanoxate, which is the filter that's in these other sunscreens. But still, if that doesn't work for you, then this would be one to consider. This also has some other really nice ingredients in it. So it does have the sodium hyaluronate, vitamin E, glycerin, and an ingredient called sorbitin olivate, which can help to soften and replenish the skin. This one is definitely the driest formulation so far. So even a little bit drier than UV Shield. I forgot to say that I do think that this one would work for all skin types as well, but probably not if you're super dry. Whereas this one I say is definitely more catered towards those that have combination leaning oily skin or just fully oily because it just doesn't have that, again, not oiliness, but it just doesn't have that same oilier feel that some of those others do. And the finish is a lot flatter as well. So if you don't like something that has that dewy look on the skin, then I think you would prefer this, but the downside is definitely the white cast. It does have a very noticeable white cast. So unlike those other two that I said are super, super subtle that you can get away with, this is not something that you can really get away with in my opinion. However, if you want something that works really well underneath makeup and you're okay with that white cast because the foundation will cover it up, then I think that this is a great option. So that's how I personally like to use a sunscreen like this. If it has a white cast, I have no problem wearing this underneath makeup because I've never found that a sunscreen with a white cast alters the color of my makeup at all. Again, I'm fair, so that's all I can speak to, but I think it works great in that way. Or you could wear it underneath a tinted sunscreen. So apply that first, apply a tinted sunscreen on top, and that can help to neutralize that white cast if it is a sunscreen that has a little bit more pigment than maybe some others, because a really sheer tinted sunscreen is not going to neutralize that. And last, we have UV Restore. So this one has two ounces of product as well, retails for $36.50. This is a broad spectrum SPF 40. It says it improves sun damaged skin, restores skin suppleness. It's a physical sunscreen. It contains natural squalane transparent zinc oxide, UVA and UVB, and is a facial sunscreen for all skin types that is oil free. This one also only has mineral filters. So again, it has zinc oxide and titanium dioxide just at different percentages. So UV replenish has 10% zinc oxide and 5.5% titanium dioxide. This one, UV Restore, has 2% titanium dioxide, 15% zinc oxide. I'm saying dioxide, so weird. Yeah, side, titanium dioxide. So just a little bit different there as far as the percentages, but both mineral. This also has some other nice ingredients to moisturize and soften the skin. So things like, again, vitamin E, but also squalane, glycerin, saccharide isomerate, and lecithin to help to replenish. I definitely, huh? <laughs> 
I definitely prefer UV Restore when it comes to the formulation over UV Replenish, but honestly not by a lot. I think it just feels a little bit silkier and more moisturizing. They are similar though in that they're just a little bit drier compared to something like a UV Daily or a UV Clear, whereas those ones are kind of like cousins, and I would say these ones are kind of like cousins too. And this is the only sunscreen that sometimes kind of gives me a little bit of trouble when I'm blending it into the skin. I don't quite know what it is about this formulation, but I find that if I'm not careful and if I don't take my time, it can kind of go a little bit patchy on me and a little bit uneven. So just keep that in mind. It is a formulation that I have to work with, but other than that, I wouldn't say it's anything that is horrible. Like I've tried so many sunscreens that just pill immediately or really, really are streaky and don't look good at all. And I wouldn't say it's anything like that, but just compared to these others and how perfectly they blend into the skin, that was the one downside. And this one is definitely a little more of a subtle white cast than UV Replenish. I feel like you can get away with this one and not just have to wear it underneath makeup or underneath a tinted sunscreen. But still, I do think there is a little bit of a white cast there. So something that I personally would prefer to wear under makeup and a tinted sunscreen anyway. And the finish of this one I would say is kind of right in between, so it doesn't make my skin look greasy or oily at all, but it's also not flat or mattifying, so I think that this would work for a lot of different skin types too. Normal to oily, normal to dry. If you're super dry, it's probably not going to feel moisturizing enough. If you're super oily, I don't think that you would like it, so just kind of the in-betweens, everyone else who's not on the extreme end of things, but that is UV Restore. I almost forgot the name. And those are all of my thoughts on the Elta MD untinted sunscreens. I really hope that this helped you guys out, kind of breaking down ingredients, formulation differences, being able to actually see all of these on my skin. My favorite for sure is UV Clear. I love, love this formulation. I just feel like you can't go wrong with it, but I think that all of these would work for different skin types and different concerns just depending on what you're looking for in a formulation and whether or not you're okay with a little bit of a white cast. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Have you tried any of these sunscreens? How did they work for you? Do you have a clear favorite? Or if you have not tried Ulta MD sunscreens, if there is one that you're interested in trying after watching this video, I'll have all of them listed in my description box below, again with that discount code and skin store link, so make sure you are clicking through that if you want the Elta MD discount. All right, that is everything for this video. Make sure to let me know what you guys would like to see from me next on my channel in the comments below as well. Are there other sunscreen brands that you guys would like me to do this style of video for? Is there a different topic that you guys wanna make sure that I cover? Let me know in the comments below. And again, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, you know the drill. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, click on that notification bell, and send my channel to a friend. Thank you so much for doing all of those things. It seriously helps me so, so much. So thank you for your support. Again, social media handles and presets are linked in my description box as well. Everything that you need to know, always in my description box. So that's it for this video. My next one will be up in a few days, so stay tuned for that. But until then, I hope you have a great few days. Yeah, you do. I'm gonna put on sunscreen on camera. Do you want some? No. Why not? You need sunscreen. No. Tea. Give me a kiss. I even brushed my teeth this morning. That's disgusting. <laughs> Are you sure you Ulta don't MD want... UV Clear. Yeah, are you sure you don't want some? No, I don't use sunscreen. That's why I'm gonna look better than you when we're 50. That's why you look like Frosty the Snowman and I look like a...